human mind is perhaps the final frontier in our understanding of ourselves. In this series, we'll be discovering how it works and how we can all make the most of it. To me, there's a big difference between the mind and the brain. The brain is the physical substance inside the skull. Nerve cells, matter, sloppy mess. The mind is totally different. The mind is a subjective experience. The mind is what we know. I mean, I don't even know for certain I've got a brain. I assume I do because I've seen all the books, and, but I haven't actually seen my own brain. But I do experience my mind every single moment. All I ever know is my mind. So the mind is the realm of subjective experience. The mind is my thoughts, my feelings, my perception of you at that moment right now. That's all, all our experience is in the mind. So they're totally different. One is physical matter, the other is inner subjective experience totally different and yet they're, they're clearly related what happens in the brain affects my mind so you know if I if I'm looking at the world obviously data is coming in through the eyes is being processed by the brain and the brains putting together its picture of what is out there but the picture of what is out there appears in the mind not in the brain Combinations sometimes seem limitless. And coming up with original ideas, of course, is something we do throughout our lives. Believe it or not, you can actually see an original idea happening, which is why this volunteer has been wired up. Scientists now think they've identified the signal of an original thought from all the other brain activity that's going on at the same time. The cleaned up trace looks like this. But the problem with trying to measure an original thought is getting someone to have one in the first place. It's virtually impossible to force somebody to have an original idea while they're connected to so much equipment. But scientists believe that you get the same sense of revelation when you solve an optical illusion. Scientists call it the aha moment. It looks like a lot of black dots, but if our volunteer looks long enough, somewhere in there is an image that he should recognize. He's got it. There's a Dalmatian sitting in there, and it's camouflaged amongst the dots. That little high peak wave, lasting just one-fifth of a second, is an intense burst of electrical activity, the unique signal of an original thought. Scientists have not only discovered what it looks like, they've also found that there are some times when we're more likely to have them than others. Normally, our brain is continually being bombarded by thoughts and sensations as we go about our normal daily lives. The tiny electrical signal of an original thought simply doesn't stand out. But if we can cut out some of this background noise, there's a greater chance we'll be aware of our aha moments. So the best way to stimulate original thinking is simply to find a way to relax. 
Just look at some of the biggest ideas in history. Isaac Newton figured out his theory of gravity as he lay in an orchard. Galileo came up with the idea of using a pendulum to mark time while he sat quietly in a church. And the structure of the atom was dreamt up by a scientist called Niels Bohr while he gazed at racehorses thundering around the track. People in relaxed states of mind have had ideas which have changed the world. Something perhaps we can all learn from. Throughout time, human beings have been mystified by the power of thought. Countless legends, myths, and social explanations surround the topic of thought, but few people understand the facts about how our thoughts impact our lives. For many years, unusual observations and experiences have been labeled bizarre, paranormal, and sometimes were even considered unexplainable coincidences. But as recent studies demonstrate, there appears to be a consistent connection between the mind and physical matter. With the modern emphasis of science and the need for quantifiable evidence, many scientists have begun using a relatively new field of study known as quantum physics or quantum mechanics to examine the laws that apply at an atomic or microscopic scale. This science endeavors to describe many previously unexplained phenomena while accounting for the often overlooked energy patterns of human thought. This new science asserts that classical laws of physics do not always apply to the happenings observed at the quantum level. Some studies have shown that the actual position of matter changes continuously until a person gazes at it, where it temporarily takes a fixed position to the human eye but actually exists simultaneously in other locations. This is called the law of superposition, and it suggests that there is no such thing as an objective or universal reality. In other words, our observation of reality changes reality. Some researchers, such as Dr. Masuru Emoto, have observed that energy, especially thought energy, can impact the physical properties of matter such as water. Early experiments showed that water purity directly impacted its frozen form. Building on this discovery, further tests involved introducing the water to extraneous variables such as music, prayer, concentrated thought, and the written word. To avoid inconsistencies, Emoto used the most neutral form of water possible, distilled water. The water, as Emoto notes, responded differently, yet consistently, to the various stimuli. Heavy metal music, placed next to water for example, continually froze in a shattered-like appearance. Water placed next to the classical music of Mozart's symphony froze in the shape of a snowflake. Then people focusing their attention on specific water samples noticed that once again the results were consistent when the water was frozen. Negative thoughts caused the water to freeze in a shattered-like formation where positive thoughts consistently created complex snowflake patterns. Since many people struggle to believe what they cannot see, Emoto hopes that his extensive research and photographs will give people some physical evidence that there may be more intriguing forces at work in the universe than many of us know about, and that we may use these forces by embracing positive thoughts and exhibiting high levels of emotion such as love and gratitude. A different experiment involved the use of random event generators, also known as REGs. 
These are small and simple computers that produce random sequences of ones and zeros. After being told to focus on either producing more ones or zeros, the participants in this study were clearly able to influence the outcome and manipulate the mathematical probability of generating the result they intended to achieve. In a follow-up study, participants were told to once again bring about more ones or zeros on REGs located on the opposite sides of the planet. The results were equally consistent. Further studies also revealed that the results were strengthened when more people concentrated their thoughts together on the same outcome. New quantum theory accounts for both the internal and external mechanisms that shape reality. Most mathematical theory explaining the operations of physical nature negates the central fact that cognition as an observer of reality adds an entirely new dimension to how we coexist and co-create our lives. The impact of human consciousness on reality, apart from the behavior action consequences, is largely due to the quantum dynamics of nerve terminals that create the link between nerve cells in the brain. This transfer of energy between synapses is just one known source of thought energy or vibration, which studies have also shown can impact the past, the present, and the future. Moods are longer period things. Moods, a mood can last an entire day, or half a day, or weeks, or months. Emotions, they come and go, right? You can, someone can, you can get the wrong phone call, the wrong bill in the mail, and it'll change your emotion for a while. You, sensations are just sensory type of things. And then thoughts, when you pay attention to them, just, they go just like ticker tape. If you just pay attention to them, next time you're in the shower, or some, you have some time alone, you'll find that your thoughts just come and go, just like that. It's important to be able to fun. We could take a look at the families of emotion, anger and fear, shame and guilt, sadness, joy, disgust, lust, contempt, envy, surprise, embarrassment, enjoyment. These are just the kinds of different emotions. And then there's, this is interesting too, seven kinds of happiness, because you can ask yourself, now how many of these am I getting on a regular basis? Now some of them we don't even have words for in English, like fiero, the delight in meeting a challenge. Can neuroscience solve the mind-body problem? When we talk about different emotions, this is one study we did where we had neutral, sad, and amusing film clips. Brain imaging, fMRI signal, what's called BOLD, the blood oxygen level dependent signal. First-person emotion ratings from moment to moment, heart rate, and then breathing rate or breathing intensity. And this is just to, to really make the point that this is a dynamic, interactive system. And this is only four channels. There are many other channels that we often look at, look at can look at as well. Um, a full explanation of a phenomena would really go from looking at the genes or genetic contribution to molecules, to neurons, neural circuitry, and then how different uh, cog cognitive processes, thinking, decision-making, emotion, behavior, are instantiated in those neural circuitry. For today's talk, I'm only gonna be talking about the top two. But a full explanation really is from genetics all the way up to interpersonal interactions. And currently we have the technology to look at all of that. They guide you throughout your life. It's not your thoughts that control where you sit in a class or on a bus, but it's if you like that girl or you think that guy smells. When a couple is together, it's their emotions that keep them tethered. Same with if they're fighting, it's their emotions that break them apart. You watch TV shows that you enjoy. You hang out with friends because you have emotional bonds with them. The people who are most successful are those who talk most of success. Those who speak most of illness have it. Yes, illness is also a creation of yours. If you have a low immune system, it's because of you. Typically, we like to blame things on the virus going around or our own immune systems, but the way that we become susceptible to them is from inside, whether that there's some ongoing negative energy or some bad feeling that we allow into ourselves. There's only one thing that becomes apparent from this understanding. You create your own reality. 
We are 100% responsible for the situations that we find ourselves in, the things that happen to us, good and bad. Throughout history, we've always played the blame game. It's, it's his fault I didn't get the promotion. It's her fault I couldn't go to the game. It's everyone else's fault. I'm so depressed. Whatever it is, and this may be the hardest thing to truly get, it's your fault. Your happiness, your sadness, your fears, and your fortunes. Every single experience of your life on Earth was because of you. Remember, just as you are creating your own individual reality, we are all co-creating our realities as a collective. 